Hi everyone and welcome to Revised Chemistry with Mr B. In this video we're going to be looking at some really cool reactions of metals in order to try and work out their reactivity. Later in the video I'm going to be going through the full reactivity series with you and I'm going to be sharing a really easy way of remembering it. We're going to start off by looking at how different metals react with cold water. So we've got some iron, copper, lithium, sodium and potassium. So if we start off putting a piece of copper in cold water, we see there's no reaction. If we put a piece of iron in the water, it doesn't look like there's much of a reaction, but if we came back to it after a week, it might have started going rusty, so a really slow reaction. Now let's see what happens with a piece of lithium. So we can see it is more reactive, it's fizzing, it's producing hydrogen gas, it's also moving around the surface of the water. It's not very dense. We can hear it's fizzing. And what many people think is smoke is actually steam because it's giving off heat energy. It's an exothermic reaction. So it's turning the water around it into steam. We can see quite clearly it's much more reactive than the copper or the iron. Now we can put a piece of sodium in the water and that's even more reactive. You might be able to see more steam being given off. And we've got a bit of a crackle there. It's melted into a ball. It's given off so much heat. So it's even more exothermic. And that is a much more reactive metal than the lithium we put in a minute ago. Finally, we're going to put a piece of potassium into the cold water. And we can see straight away that it's more reactive than any of the other metals we've tested. Look at all the steam being given off, very exothermic reaction. It reacted very, very quickly as well. It was all done with in under 10 seconds. So we'll put another piece in so we can get a proper look at it. And we can also see it's set on fire and it's burning with a lilac colored flame. And like the other ones, it's also moving across the water. So by putting metals in cold water, it's given us a really good indication of how the different reactivities are for these metals. Potassium's clearly the most reactive out of the ones we've just tested, whereas copper that had no reaction, that's the least reactive. We can also look at how metals react with oxygen. So I've got here a gas jar of oxygen and I've got some iron wool. So the element is iron. So I'm going to set it on fire and put it in this jar of oxygen to see how it burns. And then we're going to compare that to magnesium to try and work out the different reactivity between magnesium and iron. Let's see now how magnesium burns in oxygen. So we can see quite clearly that the magnesium is much more reactive than iron from the way it reacts with that oxygen. I'm now going to see how different metals react with hydrochloric acid. In each of these test tubes, I've got 20 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. So it's the same volume and it's also the same concentration because each one is one mole per dm cubed concentration. Now I'm going to add the metal to each of the test tubes. I've noticed that the starting temperature of each is 20 degrees C. So first of all, I'm putting two spatulas of iron into the first test tube. To the middle one, I'm going to add two spatulas of magnesium. And the third one, I'm going to add two spatulas of zinc. So we can try and compare the reactivity of these three different metals. And straight away, we can see that the magnesium is bubbling away furiously, producing lots of hydrogen gas. So that's clearly the most reactive out of those three. If we take a closer look, the zinc and the iron is also bubbling slowly, and they're also producing hydrogen gas, but it's not really clear which out of those two is the most reactive. So we're also going to look at the temperature change because this should be an exothermic reaction. So in a few minutes, we should notice that the thermometers on all three of these have increased and that will also give us an indication of reactivity. I've now read each of the thermometers. The iron's temperature has increased to 21 degrees from 20. 
The zinc has increased from 20 to 24 degrees and the magnesium has shot up to 58 degrees. So again, this backs up the idea that magnesium is the most reactive out of the three because it gave the biggest temperature change. And the two we couldn't quite tell, we can now see that zinc has the highest temperature change out of the other two, so that is more reactive than iron. I'm showing you quite a few different reactions today and all of the practical equipment I've used is available from Philip Harris. There's a link to the Philip Harris website in the description below my video. When you look at the results of all these different reactions, you can put the metals in order of reactivity and we call that the reactivity series. We've got potassium at the top, which is the most reactive, and we've got gold at the bottom as that's the least reactive. I've also included a rhyme on the right hand side to help you remember the order of metals in the reactivity series. So by observing the different reactions of metals with water, oxygen and acid, we've been able to build up a reactivity series. It's really important you spend the time to learn the order of that reactivity series because the understanding of the rest of this topic depends on it. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.